In this video, we're going to have a look at how you deal with some problems regarding the heat on notebooks and desktops when you use Boink. Uh, we'll also look at some software settings you can use to resolve some of these issues, and one of the software settings that can result in no work being done. And uh, finally, some connection error pop-ups, how to get rid of them. These are the common problems people experience, and I just want to show you quickly how to solve them. Some notebook manufacturers assume that you will never push your notebook very hard and do some uh, heavy processing like Boink. And as such, they don't design the notebook to get rid of heat very well. Uh, in these cases, you either have to uh, reduce the amount of work that Boink does, or you need to use something like a notebook cooler. If you don't want to use a notebook cooler, you can use the poor man's notebook cooler, which is a plate or a bowl. And by using a plate or a bowl, you lift the notebook off the surface and give it more air to circulate. Uh, you can feel underneath the notebook where the hot spots are and uh, put in, uh, position the notebook appropriately. Please choose the position of your notebook very carefully as uh, the notebooks can become very hot. Some of the chips reach. 100 degrees Celsius, and uh, this, if left in one's place on, for example, a painted wooden surface, can cause uh, some damage in the long run. So position them well. The same with the so-called bricks or the power packs. Position them in such a way that uh, there's plenty of air around them so that they can stay cool. For desktops, you can use improved uh, heat sinks. So by installing a very large heatsink or heatsink with a fan, you are able to uh, get more heat to leave the processor. You can also install very quiet fans, uh, fluid dynamic bearing fans, and uh, these again allow more air movement without increasing the noise. When choosing a large heatsink, you do need to be careful and make sure you take careful measurements. If you've got a fairly small motherboard or case, it won't fit inside or it will obscure some of the slots. So for example, in some motherboards, a very large heatsink will prevent you from installing a graphics card. You can also get silent PSUs, so that's uh, a power supply unit without a fan, and that again can help reduce the noise uh, on your PC. There are a number of videos uh, on YouTube uh, explaining how to set up a silent PC or to install some of these heat sinks. Here under advanced or sometimes under tools, depending on which version you have, you go to preferences to change the amount of heat generated. And that is done either by reducing the number of cores of your processes that are used. Uh, the other option is to reduce the amount of CPU time. So, for example, if you set it to 50%, it would be roughly one second on, one second off. And this will reduce the temperature and help you to monitor, monitor it. So you can reduce it to, say, 50%, see if it's uh, cool enough. If you need to make it cooler, make it 25%. Or if there's still more room, make it 75%. And so on. Keep trying different percentages. As point doesn't, as yet, have an option to... Uh, set the temperature. So you have to monitor the temperature with a separate tool such as speed fan and then keep changing your settings to match the temperature you require. Another problem that arises is that the disk light on your computer can stick on and uh, point stops doing meaningful work. What can happen is that it's so busy recording checkpoints to the disk that it stops being able to do any more work. So it's best to set the checkpoints uh, disk time to approximately 90 seconds multiplied by the number of cores on your processor. So if you have a single core processor, you would set it to 90 seconds. Uh, if you've got a dual core processor, set it to about 180 seconds. But you can change the settings and uh, depends on how fast your drive is. So if your hard drive light is sticking on, uh, increase that number. Another item that causes problems is especially in areas which do not have permanent internet access or in areas where there's storms and you need to disconnect the internet at regular intervals. 
is to set the option to not display the error message regarding connections. And you do that by sliding the slider to zero as in the video.